This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it? <coughs> Nostalgia Critic, the Justice League is in danger. Oh no! Their future is in great geo party. Please meet us at your studio and bring YouTubers with a connection to cinema. I can't believe such an original super team movie that broke all sorts of box office records is in peril. Well, if they want YouTubers with a connection to cinema, it's time to light the cinema signal. Or I could just give him a call. Hey, you want to get drunk and nitpick a movie? Critic? Chris. Critic? Barrett. Hello? Jeremy! I must say, I was very brave of you to physically transition into talking text with a ding at the end. You act as if I had a choice. Ding! Fantastic! The cinema sins are ready for action! There's only one other YouTuber connected to cinema, or at least has cinema in his name, that needs to make the long journey. Hey, Cinema Snob, wanna do a review? Sure. All right, Cinema Sins and the Cinema Snob, ready to save the Justice League. Wait a minute, aren't we forgetting about one other cinema-related YouTuber, Cinemassacre? Chris, don't you remember? Cinemassacre died a long time ago. Did he? Didn't seem very convincing. Ah, of course he did, Chris. Just ask him yourself. Oh yeah, I'm totally dead. There, you see? I don't know. I just have a feeling he's not really dead. Also, is there something off about his upper lip? What are you talking about? My lip always looked this way. You're all stupid and I'm dead, so piss off. Eh, convinced me. Yes, now don't you come back and save us in our time of need. Dead people have a bad habit of doing that. Fucking weirdos. All right, after so much time building this up. We only spent a few minutes. Is he always like this? Worse. <laughs> time to unite the Justice League. Ah, there they are now. DC's biggest money makers. Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Shazam, Joker. So, what great danger did you summon us to take on? Oh, no, we didn't summon you. You didn't? No, we're doing fine. Better than fine. He's the one that summoned you. Hey, guys, it's me, Cyborg. From the Justice League. Teen Titans? Go. Anyway, I need your guys' help saving the Justice League. But why? Yeah, a lot of DC characters are doing great right now. For them, sure, but if Justice League doesn't become popular again, I may never get another movie. I guess in some respect I see what he's talking about. With the Marvel Cinematic Universe changing the landscape of box office hits, DC was rushing to catch up on the potential gold mine that lay before them. They released superhero movies that were all connected, similar to what Marvel had started five years earlier. But where Marvel gracefully eased people into how their world worked with individual hero stories, DC threw unfinished Wikipedia pages posing as films. As some have pointed out, DC's cinematic lineup was the equivalent of going from Iron Man to Civil War to Guardians of the Galaxy to Captain America to the Avengers, about as straightforward as a curvy metal rod game at carnivals. On top of that, due to a family tragedy, Zack Snyder had to leave as director and was replaced by Joss Whedon, and they're about as polar opposite as you can get. So the tone of the film seemed to juggle back and forth as well. Because of this, Justice League underperformed at the box office, still making its money back, but not becoming the record breaker DC was hoping for. Exactly! And now DC is doing movies that barely tie into a continuing story, and they're... Making break! <laughs> 
So you see, unless people see the value in a DC Cinematic Universe that connects, there could be no more Justice League, and thus, no more me. All right, listen, Jax. Kano! I mean, Cyborg. That's what he said. I don't remember this movie being the greatest, but I remember it being better than DC's other stinkers. Yes, with the overflowing positivity we give in most of our videos, I'm sure we can find something of value here. <laughs> Let's get to it then. This is our review of the one and only, for now, Justice League. I was promised booze. In the kitchen. Well, this movie had a smaller budget than I thought. The studio was okay when Whedon said he wanted to turn this into a found footage movie. So one of the biggest criticisms is that Henry Cavill was under contract not to shave his mustache when shooting Mission Impossible 6. Which means they had to digitally remove it when he came back to play Superman. But this movie had a budget of over 300 million dollars. I'm sure they made it look okay. Let's do some questions? Ah! Christ, did he brush his teeth with kryptonite toothpaste? Yeah, I didn't know Mouse Man was in this movie. Still waiting on his own film, DC. What's the best thing about planet Earth? You can keep stealing from Marvel and no one will care. By the way, Superman never does answer this question in the movie. Presumably his legal team interrupted before cutting. What's the best thing about planet Earth? You don't have to answer that question. Cut to Gotham City, or the set of holy musical Batman, where a criminal's robbing a pigeon trainer's house? Hey, they made coin, man. He stopped by the Cape Crusader, though, played by Ben Affleck. What are you doing? No, wait! Wait, wait! <laughs> We're finally gonna see what happened to Johnny Gobbs. It turns out Batman was using this criminal's fear to lure out an alien menace known as the Parademons. For such a cool name, why do they look like the B-Twins from The Tick? I just wanted to tempt your tummy with the taste of nuts and honey. He blows up, but Batman is afraid there might be more. Or rather, the criminal is afraid there might be more. <laughs> yeah, things are cool between them now. What was that? A scout. From space. Like an alien army? Alfred, are you seeing this? Alfred? You Bruce Wayne? <laughs> I thought you had a way in his jawline! It's because they know he's dead, right? Superman. Where does that leave us? Still able to rob shit. Hello, you're a criminal. The opening credits show a world without Superman, which apparently means a lot more violence, a lot more slow-mo, and a lot more slow songs. Yeah, Snyder's used to ripping off himself. He can do it again with these credits. Drop your guns now! We then see the Kingsman seizing the Central Criminal Court. Uh, bang? As Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, decides now is a good time to come out of retirement. Yeah, not 9-11, World War II, or anything like that. Just this place being blown up. But how does this tie into the plot? To remind you that Wonder Woman was a hit. Yeah, but I thought that... Who are you? You're too late. The countdown's already begun. Of course the code to disarm it is 3615 and damn lasso! I'm glad the people are safe, but poor birds. We see Batman approaching a village where Aquaman, played by Jason Momoa, is the dolphin rack he said to constantly save the day. The fight comes, we'll need you. Don't count on a Batman. Did you hear that? That guy's Batman! Nah, I heard he looked like the guy from Twilight. Strong man as strong as alone. You ever hear of Superman? He died fighting next to me. I know, because I originally tried to kill him. It's a complicated story, but don't worry, it makes no sense. Ha, shaved. Now no one will know that was me. One misses the days when one's biggest concerns were exploding wind-up penguins. Yeah, I also miss Bane. We next see The Flash, played by Ezra Miller, visiting his father in prison. Hurry it up, will ya? <laughs> oh, I get it! Yeah. I can't sit here and watch you run in place for some old dude who's not going anywhere. Dad, that's not the time. Fun. As you may have noticed, these character backstories are quickly rushed, so you aren't given much time to connect with them. Yeah, Marvel had a bad habit of giving most of the Avengers their own movies, so they didn't need to explain much when they met up. Wait, are you telling me that the Suicide Squad doesn't make any appearance in this movie? No. Okay, good. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about! Like, look at my intro! It's mostly just talking. There's no flashbacks. It's just me saying what happened to me rather than showing what happened to me. I can access everything. I lost your mother in that accident. The box stays 
hidden. I got a language in my head that I don't speak. That is a good point. I mean, what were your thoughts about Black Widow and Iron Man 2? She was in Iron Man 2? Exactly. But the more she interacts with others, the more she forms her character. People want to see her in her own movie now because she had unique scenes with unique interactions. Here we have Cyborg having a brooding talk in his apartment, a brooding talk on a rooftop, and I think a brooding talk against a green screen. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny, what's up? I have a problem with Lisa. She said that I hit her. <sighs> what? Why are we suddenly supposed to be invested after that? See, that's what I'm talking about, man. You just gotta be your own thing. You don't need to have the connection with them, baby. Yeah, if I was gonna fight Ben Affleck's Batman, I'd be like a million years old. Hell, Batman's a vigilante and they sell toys of him in my universe. Let, Let it go. go. Let, Let it go. go. No! I believe in the sanctity of the Justice League and all of me getting my own, all of us getting our own movie. I haven't said anything in a while, so ding! Meanwhile, on Thermos, um, Amazon Island... I already made that joke. I already don't care. The Amazons guard a powerful device called the Mother Box. Mother Box? Yeah, she married the GameCube and gave birth to the Game Boy. Huh. As something awakens it, causing great distress. <laughs> Whoa! Wow! Does it feel good to be out of there? A bargain basement Thanos appears named Steppenwolf, voiced by Kieran Hines, who tries to steal the mother box for himself. At last, you call me home. Oh my god, Superman's upper lip has mutated and become the villain of this movie. No, no, it's just an unwanted Soul Calibur character, even down to the weapon he uses. Steppenwolf wins. I turned down a cameo in Game of Thrones for this. Ha! Take that, Marvel. We didn't wait for the end to get our shitty sky portal. We threw it in right in the first 30 minutes. Steppenwolf grabs the mother box and the Amazon signal Diana by firing a flaming arrow, burning down an ancient monumental building. You know a phone could work. Lois Lane, played by Amy Adams, talks about the death of Clark while a seemingly hilarious news story plays. My Howard is a good man, and these aliens are gonna f probe him? And I'll stick a f probe up your aliens. Gee, I wonder if this was a Joss Whedon written scene. This janitor's wife had some strong words for the aliens she says stole her man. <laughs> Seriously, we all know aliens are real. So if you see your husband, let us know. But swearing ladies, right? <laughs> who was your source? Um, the activist. Who was your guy? Well, I'll see if she'll take your call. <laughs> so it's a she. Oh, next you'll be telling me they can leave the kitchens and fight crime! Oh, scandal! Ooh. It's not a shame. We apologize for this confusing lesson. We now return you to your superhero movie. Thankfully, Diana meets up with Bruce, as let's be honest, they're the closest thing to any chemistry of any kind in this movie. Oh, I don't know. I think Bruce and Alfred's romance will send hearts aflutter. I think there's an attack coming. It's already here. Diana tells us about Steppenwolf while showing us what clearly should have been the climax of this movie, as men, Amazon, Fish, and Ryan Reynolds nightmares fought him off from collecting three mother boxes to rule the everything. All the tribes of men fought side by side. Even the gods themselves all acted as one. Now it's six people who look like dirty amusement park statues. Look, Mom! I'm next to Wonder Woman! Wow! Okay, so I'm not entirely sure why all these armies can't just get together again, but we do get everyone's favorite part about the movie, The Flash. That's right! Everybody who saw this movie could get behind The Flash. Oh yeah, I do remember him being pretty funny in this movie. Yeah, it's nice to get some comedy in these gloomy DC films. Tell me about this. The person who looks exactly like me, but who is definitely not me. Star, but I remember the rest of his stuff being pretty funny. My special skills include uh, viola, uh, web design, fluent in sign language, gorilla sign language. <laughs> that old gorilla sign language routine. It caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories, so I am just a black hole of snacks. I am a snack hole. Were we just looking for anything to like about this movie? Oh, hey, it's gotta be a lot better than CW Flash, which has anybody here seen that show? 
I have. And? We're in trouble. Okay. You don't get it, man. Everybody was like, DC, you're too gloomy. You need to lighten up. Well, now we have some comedy for you. I mean, yeah, I guess because we saw a little humor in these movies, we thought it was okay, but... But now looking back, it's... Like brunch. What is brunch? You wait in line for an hour for... Oh, oh shut, shut up, up Joss, Joss Whedon! Hey, lay off. That's our shawarma. I mean, something totally original. Could I have a sip of that? Yeah. It's not... Um, what if he had the wrong guy? Bruce Wayne would just have another dead kid he'd have to mop up. It's not... Oh, that's the sixth flash I've killed this week. After watching what clearly should have been the introduction of Aquaman... <laughs> Lunchtime. He goes back to his kingdom to try and stop Steppenwolf as well as continue to have no chemistry with Amber Heard. When my parents fought in the wars, she took me in. What a saint. You dare speak of Queen Atlanta that way. Oh, thank God, we're back to two people talking in left-right justified shots. We missed you in your three-minute absence. Steppenwolf gets the mother box and sets up camp in Russia. Finally, HBO tells us the truth about Chernobyl. Unsatisfied with his pictures of Spider-Man, J.K. Simmons as Gordon sees pictures of Batman aren't much better, as he summons him to save kidnapped people at Gotham Harbor. Do you really think that... Oh, wow, they just... They really just vanish. Huh? Oh. That's rude. Hey, he's a vital part to these movies, man. A vital part. Listen to me now! Lois Lane's the key! Find us! Find us, Bruce! Yeah, I don't think we're following through with that anymore. Oh, okay. Wait! I need to tell you about brunch! What is that? A vital part. Steppenwolf starts killing people until he's told where to find what he's looking for. Where is my mother box? That still sounds so funny. As the Justice League turns into the Injustice League, the whole fight sequence has the effects of a DC video game. Boy, you really feel the weight of movement in every scene, don't you? Sure, the weight of the hand moving a mouse and getting carpal tunnel is very felt here. Uh, did I just score? Thanks, Alfred. But I'll take it from here. Uh, d do I know you? Did Brucey get another boy toy while I was out? Aquaman joins the fight as well. I mention this as an afterthought because the movie does too. And they fight Steppenwolf off. However, Cyborg finds the final mother box and they go to the Batcave. Via animated Technodrome elevator. Wow, it's like a cave. Look, if you just imagine him less as a superhero and more as Jason from The Good Place, this really works a lot better. This is a person who looks exactly like me, but who is definitely not me. I mean, Jason? Who is Jason? Uh, so is this a, a bad time to bring up my blood sugar? You got it, homie. I give good advice. See, that works. That works. Come on, buddy. Justice League! We got you, man, we got you. We cost more than the Avengers, and we look better than the Avengers! I am so sorry about all this. Booyah! Booyah! What's up, camera? Representing a population of people who do not have a product I am about to share with you. I want to talk about HelloFresh. What's that symbolic person in this hypothetical situation where you are in this room and we are friends? I said HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Get easy, seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. It's home-cooked meals made simple. But I know what you're thinking because now I have the power of telepathy. If we are to make this world a better place, we must first start with our own sins. But also, can I say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout food? 
Yes, HelloFresh has you covered. Here are some visuals that, like magic, will lay before you to better represent my presentation. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality, regardless of your comfort in the kitchen. You can make deliciousness part of your every week. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh is flexible and fits your lifestyle. Easily change your delivery days, food preferences, and skip a week whenever you need. But let me open up to you, hopeful person that will maybe purchase this product of which I speak. I am not a good cook. There I said it! But HelloFresh's instructions are so easy and so simple. Even I can make delicious meals and alter them as I see fit. Not now, kitty. I must tell the people about HelloFresh. My personal favorite is the cranberry apple pork chop. I get it all the time. Look at that. It looks amazing. It tastes amazing. I made that and I can't cook, but I can now thanks to HelloFresh. Please prepare yourself in this moment for an amazing offer. Okay, go. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Nostalgia9 and enter Nostalgia9. This is a repeat of that fact. For $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Nostalgia9 and enter Nostalgia9. It's like getting $20 off your first four boxes. Life is different after HelloFresh. Happier, smarter. Fresher. Hello Fresh, I love you. Even though you are a company that cannot physically be loved. But I will still verbally represent this because it is poetically beautiful and true. This is the end of you looking at me right now. Goodbye. For $80 off your first month of Hello Fresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Nostalgia9 and enter Nostalgia9. Hey everybody, you can see us at Grand Rapids Comic Con in Michigan, November 8th to the 10th. And you can also see us on Twitch Monday through Friday now. Every one of those days we're streaming, we love answering questions from the chat, so drop on by and hopefully we'll see you there. So Batman has a plan to use the Mother Box to bring Superman back to life, as he feels he's the missing key to defeating Steppenwolf. Superman is dead. We don't know what state he's in. Don't you bat explain to me! Superman was a beacon to the world. That's why a lot of the world feared him, and I tried to kill him. So Party City somehow sneaks into this high security base, and they dig up Superman, but make fist bump jokes, so it's not creepy. Okay, we're not ready for racially charged. I'm glad we all agree that Justice League grave robbing is cute. They use the technology to bring him back to life. Superman lives! God, that would have made this more fun. No, I mean he's resurrected, but with his memories all screwed up. So he sees the Justice League as a threat. And they said they'd never make a sequel to Brightburn. What does it say when the best part of a $300 million superhero movie is an eye turn? You resurrected me with the shitty upper lip. Clark. His real name's Clark? God, next to Bruce Wayne, you guys suck at keeping identities! <sighs> but Lois arrives, hopefully knocking some sense into his brain, or at least into his shorts, while Steppenwolf steals the final mother box, which they left totally unguarded. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, something is definitely bleeding. Thanks, Joss! Guys, I've done it. I found the perfect way to make you see the genius of this movie. I brought back Cinemassacre as a pissed off super mecha death cry. See, isn't that awesomely epic? I guess it's awesome. But it's not really epic. What? How? We knew he was gonna come back anyway, and it's not really furthering anything. If anything, it kind of just slows stuff down. It, it's awesome, so it's awesomely epic. Oh, come on, sweetie. It's what you've all been waiting for. Everybody loves you, buddy. Everybody loves me, buddy. That's right. Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll be over here then. Yeah, this studio didn't have enough holes. Kind of like this movie. Ding! Superman takes Lois to the farm, where it's always permanently magic hour o'clock, when, after coming back from the dead, this is what they have to say to each other. You smell good. Did I not before? Thanks, Thanks Joss! Joss. 
Don't worry, it gets stranger. What was it like? Coming back? Itchy. Okay, seriously, did a preschool write this? You smell good! Did I not before? What was it like coming back? Itchy. <laughs> Here's a Zen riddle. What's flatter in this scene? The green screen or his acting? Just got out of a wooden box. I mean, honestly, weird. In so many ways. This is nice. I do hope that they include Steppenwolf nuking the world in the background. Their ignoring of Armageddon just shows how much they're in love. You called Mom. You do have better chemistry with her than Lois. The team gets ready to take him on, but not before Aquaman reveals some embarrassing secrets. You're gorgeous and fierce. And you know what? I don't want to die. Maybe I'm scared because... Hey, screw it. Let's keep it going. Game of Thrones is overrated. Bad Batch is underrated. There aren't enough jokes about me being in Stargate Atlantis. And I banged Nicole Kidman. But she likes to say she banged me. Something many people have noticed is the climax of this movie changed from having a darker gray sky to a neon red sky. What do they think this is, Batman the Animated Series? Actually, he is animated for most of this. It checks out. Even when they get off the plane, the color correction goes from steel blue to Garfield orange. Honestly, it matches the inconsistencies for the rest of the climax. Like how they're flying parademons that are supposed to be scary. But also Nickelodeon slime is their blood. <laughs> Don't forget how they're focusing mainly on this one family, but suddenly it's revealed there's more to be saved, even though we never see them. What are you talking about? There's some in that corner of the screen, and there's some in that corner of the screen? At least in Man of Steel, we can clearly see who's being ignored. Oh, speaking of which, he's back. Wow, I really thought he was going to sit this one out. Hey, at least it earned one of the most awkward Batman faces ever given. Hmm, I think that face goes here. Part of the reason the climax feels so empty, I mean apart from everything being set up backwards, is the CG is not only fake, but also cluttered. Because this is an alien design, it's hard to keep up with what we're looking at. Avengers, an amazingly cheaper movie to make, didn't always have convincing effects, but it was in a location we all recognize and well lit. So we're not always asking are we on a building, in a building, far away, or really close. Everything is somehow too dark and too bright at the same time, with heavy shadows for a darker background, but a lighter background given instead. Even the colors look really rushed. I mean, I know it's gonna sound weird, but with the obvious green screen fake effects and turned up colors, it kind of looks like one of my reviews. The greatest combination of heroes should not look like a review show I put together in a week. You stop that box from destroying all life on Earth. Hey look, the Batman v Superman poster. Thanks, Justice League. Steppenwolf is defeated, the mother box is separated, Flash does his Jeff Goldblum pose, and Cyborg says booyah. Booyah. Ha <laughs> ha, that's gonna be my thing and my move. It's pointless. <sighs> hey, thanks, Superman 4! The day is saved as the town turns into the ending of Princess Mononoke, and the team decide they need a headquarters for future sequels. Big round table. Six chairs, right there. But room for more. Though you and Superman might look a little different. Uh, this is a crime scene. Is there no damn police tape? The film ends with Superman and Flash racing. Again, they'll tell you who wins in the sequel. And even Pipsqueak Luther has a cameo after the credits. He and his odd little friends are forming some sort of league. Shouldn't we have a league of our own? Out. 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 So, what did you guys think? Wow. That did not hold up as well as I remember. And I remember it only being okay at best. But come on guys, for a movie that's seven years old, I think it's allowed to show its age. It's only two years old. Huh, this movie's garbage. And there's only one thing left to be done. There's only one beacon of hope that can save the day. I said there's only one beacon of hope that can save the day. Oh. Oh, okay, G give me a second. No! Yes, even though the most popular of us had perished, 
You know we have more subscribers than all of you combined. He came back, saved the day, and most importantly, we were emotionally invested every step of the way. By God, this epicness was earned. You're fucking weird. Fucking weirdos. But I don't get it. How is blowing up Justice League saving Justice League? Because you don't want to be like this Justice League. Yeah, you want to be like this Justice League. Or this Justice League. Or any of these. What, the stuff you watch on TV? They don't even have a continuing story half the time. Exactly. And they're doing really damn good right now. Justice League didn't work because it was the end result of trying to do the same thing the MCU did, only darker and not as focused. Where the animated DC shows and movies had similar worlds and characters, but never one continual story. It would change up a little bit in each one. Hell, I can't even count how many times Superman died in them. But each one felt big and epic because it was planning to tell one good story, not looking ahead to others. And those are the stories DC is doing best right now, the self-contained ones, the ones that have as little connection as possible to the previous DC movies, not only stand on their own, but they also allow the most variety. With cast members, time periods, and even styles constantly being switched around, DC may have more of a unique voice allowing exactly that, more unique voices. Justice League was two very different voices coming together to serve what felt like a corporate environment. DC movies now are feeling more individual, personal, and carrying more weight. Yeah, it sucks we may never get that complete universe like what Marvel has, but this would allow DC to truly be something different, maybe even something better in the long run. Some people have said there could be several different Joker origin movies with several different actors, or as the Joker says, If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. While Justice League is nowhere near the worst superhero movie, it's a step away from the potential of what DC films could be giving us. Bottom line, if you want Justice League to thrive, continue to stop doing what Marvel is doing and keep doing what DC is doing. Yeah, come to our side. Baby. We could be deep, dark, and have money. And have audiences love you. That does sound nice, but... No! By going that route, it means that Justice League was just a big sellout. It never had any real story, any real depth, and it'll never lead to me being in a movie ever again. So no, I can never join you. I will stand by the story that Justice League has started. I will stand- Cyborg, get your agent. Good news, baby. You got your own solo movie without the Justice League. Hey! hey you know, congrats. Now, the real question is, are you going to go with it, or are you going to stick with the integrity of the Justice League? Yeah, art means more when it pays more. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I'm the Cinema Snob. And, and we're, we're Cinema Sins. Sins. DC future is gonna be weird. Let's just hope it's a good weird. Oh yeah. What was it like coming back? Itchy. Hey everybody, Doug Walker here. Uh, so this is a charity shout out, kind of for another charity shout out. Uh, this is for uh, twitch.tv slash indie. They do this uh, stream from November 6th to November 18th to try and raise money for Toys for Tots. Uh, and they came to me and they were like, hey, you guys want to be a part of it? Well, we sadly had a little bit too much going on, but I said I'd love to do a charity shout out for it. So uh, they've apparently been doing this for a while and uh, we'll put the donation link uh, in the description and they also have a really cool video uh of them apparently like shopping around with toys for tots like the owner of the channel goes and uh you know sees like some of the stuff they do so it, it's a really cool idea and they just they they stream and they try to raise money uh for i mean you know toys for tots i mean who doesn't uh we, we've done toys for tots several times uh in the charity shout outs uh but yeah they, they tried to raise money for them and it sounds like a really cool fun idea and they do a lot of cool fun stuff so Definitely go check it out, uh, look at the link, check out Toys for Tots. Like I said, I mean, a lot of people know uh, who they are and the great work they do, so definitely take a look. And that's about it. See you next time. Take care.